Hello, The Darkness 344 here. Today I'm just going to be putting out a sort of update video. So, uh, at the moment I've been doing a series on this computer over here, my 8-bit programmable, programmable computer, and it's it's working out really well. I've got a few episodes pre-recorded, I still need to record one about what I've done with this display and stuff, and everything else, what I've got working, where I found bugs, where I fixed them. But, I think... Uh, I'm actually going to stop work on this because it was it was a great concept and it works really well but in the past few yeah the past few days I found better RAM designs smaller RAM designs uh, just better designs in general uh, found better ways of making computers so and this is a good computer and it has a lot of functionality and it would be a cool computer because you have nice displays and stuff and you'd also be able to program it from an I.O. which I still haven't finished but and it'd all work in theory but yeah I've just decided that I'm gonna work on something different for now because yeah I may finish this at a later date I don't know actually but programmable computers are really cool but the problem is is they take up so much memory and then you have to and they also take extra commands because then you have to do special IO commands to program them and stuff and it's quite annoying and but it, it does mean you can compile programs for them with like a separate compiler but yeah it's just a bit annoying when it comes to it so uh, my yeah so for this new computer that I'm going to show off in a minute uh, kinda got a bit of inspiration from a guy called Lego Master 99 who I don't think records Minecraft videos anymore, but when he did, he made a 4-core computer, which was pretty cool. It was in Java Edition, and I thought it was pretty cool. And I saw it like a, a few years ago, and I really wanted to make some sort of multi-core computer. So, I have been making normal computers right now, but... What's this? This is an ALU, isn't it? I decided to try and make a multi-core computer. So, as you can see, there's a lot of parts down here. I've been working, this multi-core computer is v way more advanced than any of my normal computers. So like, I've been working on dual read RAM, which is here. This is the design that I use. It's big, but it does the job. It's fairly fast. I was trying to work on a two wide one, but it didn't really work. I've been working on ALUs. So here's the ALU that I'm using in it. And I've been working on instruction sets, where this is a part of the instruction set that I've been using in it. So you have your counter, your display. This was a very, very, very simple computer. And as you can see, we have it right here. I'll show you it off in a bit. But first of all, I'm going to want to explain the instruction set and how it all works. So this is a 4-bit computer with the simplest instruction set I could achieve for it. It's as simple as I possibly could make. That means only eight lines of code. For for whenever I do a very simple computer, I only have eight lines of code at minimum because four lines of code would be too little and 16 lines of code too much for a stupid, stupid, simple computer. <laughs> then I have a display, but I haven't connected it when I built it because, yeah, who cares about displays? Uh, I didn't think I was going to be doing something that I'll explain in a minute. I have your AOU controls, your load into register A, register B, and give your output. I have your functions, where there's four possible functions. I know, I'm using an ALU which can have a lot more than four possible functions, but I could not be entirely bothered, so we're not gonna, going to be using more than four functions, sadly. We're only going to be using three functions, because zero, zero would be no function. Uh, that's because I just want it as simple as possible just to demonstrate that it works. Then we get to these next parts. So I'm actually going to have to go into this computer to show you these next parts because uh, I changed the instruction set from that to here in a bit. So the I wanted to make this dual core, which I have, which is pretty cool, which I'll show off in a minute. But another thing that I decided while making that instruction set down there, I was like, Oh, hang on, but if I really want to use dual RAM and pipeline and stuff, I could use a dual data bus. So that's what I've done. And this dual data bus is, is a nightmare to wire. It really is a nightmare to wire. And if you look at the computer, it looks like an 8-bit computer. 
if you look down, look, 8 bits. This would literally be the equivalent of an 8 bit dual core computer, and it's literally almost the same size as one. But the main difference is, is that it's 4 bits because it uses two cores, two cores, two data lines. So here are the commands. So you have a uh, secondary buses. I've named them secondary buses. They're not really secondary. They're basically the bus for your core. So each core has secondary buses and these buses will not be able to communicate or give data to each other. They're individual buses for the cores. Uh, so you have your secondary bus zero and your secondary bus one. That's cool because it means you have two secondary buses per core, which means you can do several things. Like, you can say to a cache while uh, writing to the ALU or something like that, who knows. On Yeah, you can save a number from one of the lines uh, to your cache and save your number from the other bus onto your ALU or something, who knows. I don't really know what you'd use it for, but it's very useful, so yeah, because you have so many possibilities. Then you have your secondary bus control. This is basically the control for these two, because these are just your data points. You can just put data on it and stuff. These are just your data. You actually need a control line, don't you, for them. So you have read and write commands. You have write to zero, write to one, read to zero, read one. Uh, I've called it write and read because it's like RAM, but the difference is write means you can write onto the data bus, and read means the data bus you read from. So if we look at the read commands, they are linked up to here, and we, when we activate them, you will read data from that data bus into your ALU, or your RAM, or whatever. So I'm just going to fix that because I don't want to break it. So that's your read commands. Your write commands will write into this line, and the way you write is it comes in this end. As you can see, it comes in right over here, and it's from your cache as well as your uh, ALU, which I think it's a bit broken, but I'm not too sure. I'll have to test it out. Actually, no, because you have your signal stoppers here. So I'll come to the cache as well. So I decided since uh, it's going to be dual data bus, it's going to be slower because it has to be bigger, which means if I'm using, actually, uh, let's let's just let's just go to the rest of the instruction set before I explain the cache, because that'll probably be easier. You have your main data control, which addresses the main data bus, which is the bus that connects each core to each other as well as the RAM to the cores, which is over here, which does not look like RAM, but believe me, it is uh, my own jewelry design. So that is the main data bus. And as you can see, there are two. You have write one, write zero, read one, read zero. So you can read onto data, you can read from data bus zero, and you can read onto either line zero, I mean secondary bus zero or secondary bus one. That's the clever thing. It, whenever you read from the main data bus, you can read onto the line you specify. If you say read zero, it won't just go to read to uh, secondary bus zero. You can read onto whichever one you want. So that makes it a lot more compatible. And then you have a read one, of course. Then you have write zero and write one, which basically writes whatever is on your secondary data bus of the core you're having the command on it writes whichever one onto the certain one. And of course, you'd have to specify uh, which one is writing with the secondary bus control. Because if you put both of, on, both of them on, it would corrupt the data because it wouldn't work properly. So I think I might have to fix this a bit more, but I don't know if that works fully, but I'll have to check it out. I haven't tested it fully yet, that's the <laughs> other thing. Then you have your L1 cache, which I'm not even sure if it is a proper L1 cache, but it's basically a mini cache that stores uh, a nibble of data, so one cell worth of data, in per core. And uh, technically you could access it by the other core by saying, I'll write the contents of the cache onto the main data line, but it's generally just uh, for the core. It's, it's, it's very fast RAM, basically. It's 
it, say you're doing a Fibonacci sequence and you don't really want to uh, use the bandwidth of the main data line, or you just want to do it so it's as fast as possible, you would use the cache because it's very fast. Then you have your RAM controls, and a lot of RAM controls, as you can see. You have your RAM commands, you have write bus 1, write bus 0, read bus 1, read bus 0. Read bus 1 reads whatever is on bus 1, read bus 0 reads whatever is on bus 0, and that reads into the RAM. To write to the RAM, you'd of course have to trigger the write command. The write bus 0, write bus 1, uh, these both decide which bus you're going to be writing the output to. So say if I wanted to read RAM 0 onto bus 1, I could just select bus 1 and read the cell that I want to read from. And of course it's dual read RAM, so you can read per bus. So I want to, so I could say I want to read 1 on bus 1 and I want to read 0 on bus 0, and I could do them both at the same time which is pretty clever and you can address which one you want to read and it's only four nibbles of RAM so four addressable cells but it's enough for a simple computer like this then you have your RAM write which is basically write under the certain RAM it's only single write so you can only write at once but it means you can also write and read at the same time because it's still dual read which is pretty clever uh, I don't know what I just clicked on my mouse <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's kind of confusing. So let's show you the cache. So the cache is over here, and basically the data comes down from your... Uh, it's kind of hard to find. The data comes down from your secondary data buses and goes into your cache, which you can trigger to write with this line, which is the write command, of course. Which I still need to put a bit more delay on. I still haven't timed this computer properly. And this is just a D flip-flop, which works as a nice latching cell with a write command, kind of update. And it basically goes back in and you can say write to the data bus when you want to write it. So yeah, that's basically your one of the cores. And you have two of these cores and they are connected with a lot of busing. So in one of my videos, one of my next videos I will show you this off with some cool programs that show two cores running at once. This is a very very simple dual core computer so don't expect it to do much. It is. The next video I'm going to do is probably going to be like something titled like oh first dual core computer in bedrock edition or I don't know. But this is a very simple computer so don't expect the cores to be able to interrupt each other and stuff. Uh, in the future I may make one, I don't know how I feel about that because it does take a very very long time so yeah especially with a dual data bus I'd probably only do a single data bus if I was going to make one and I'd, I'd make it 8 bit and have a lot more program memory probably like 32 or 64 lines and of course since this is so simple it's going to be running off one clock so the clock is it has one clock so both the cores will clock on the same clock cycle which is limiting but Oh well, it's how it is with a simple one like this. So yeah, that's basically what it can do. Well, actually, what it can do. All it can do is add A minus B and B minus A. That's pretty much what the ALU can do, as well as shifting data around. But I guess you could do some pretty cool things with it, like the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, I don't really know what you'd do with it because it's so simple, but it's pretty cool anyway. And I can see, I think I'm missing torches. I am missing a torch. Well, lucky that I found that. I need to clock it. I don't know why it's broken. Oh yeah, that's because there's no torches here either. There we go, fixed. Perfect, and I need one here apparently too. So, uh, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this computer. I'm going to probably try get my dad to program the a Fibonacci sequence onto it. But the big challenge is that I'm going to set him is he has to program it in less than five lines. Five lines is the amount of lines that a normal computer would take 
to do Fibonacci sequence. So that's a single bus computer. But since this is dual bus, you should be able to do it in probably less than five lines. I don't know too much, but hopefully he can. Uh, the next video that I'll do will be showing this off fully and yeah, showing off if he can do it or not. But yeah, so that's my plans with this computer. And it, I also do, I also make some program that uses both of the cores. So it will probably do an operation on this core and this core at the same time, then save this one to RAM, load it from RAM into this one and add the two numbers or something. I don't actually know. It'll be cool. We'll find out. Who knows? But yeah, that's this computer and that's what I'm planning to do with it. And so yeah, I'll probably be retiring this computer back here. So some other things that I'm planning to do. Uh, I may show off some more things like maybe how to build this ALU. This isn't ALU, this is RAM. The ALU back there. Maybe show off how to build this dual read RAM. Yeah, this is dual read RAM. I don't exactly know. Oh, that's why I've been clicking. Hmm? Oh, it doesn't do anything. Uh, because it's a nice dual read RAM that's in bedrock edition. And there's not really many dual read RAM designs in bedrock edition because they're all in Java edition. Because I'm not sure anyone's silly enough to actually make a, a computer that's advanced enough to use something like this. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It's just a brief update on what I'm going to do. I may dabble a bit more in series, Siri data transfer as well, but who knows. Yeah, please like and subscribe, and I guess I am out.